Hello, veteran 0 one here. Welcome back, and we are replaying Final Fantasy IV. In the last episode, we defeated the Giant of Babel. Cain came to his senses. He's going to join us in our fight against Zemus. Apparently, Zemus is the guy that's causing all the problems here with manipulating Golbez and trying to retrieve crystals from this planet and all kinds of crazy stuff. But anyways... Uh, yeah, I don't care about equipment. I already showed equipment in the last episode. These are my ability setups for the next battle. As you can see, I have Auto Battle, Steel, Cry Upgrade, and Nujitsu Jitsu for Edge. I have Ramu on Auto Battle. Brace with Cecil. Breakman for Rosa, because I can't think of anything better at this point. And then I have the Focus Auto Battle Command for Kane. That way he can charge up attacks. I do have... In fact, maybe I don't. Maybe I don't. And, and, oh, no, I still have the Avenger Sword. So, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to equip a stronger weapon, like the Defender Sword. For now, anyways. Yeah, again, we're in the basement of Baron. And... We're going to talk to the King of Baron. See if he can help us out. Oh, well, at least your mind lives on. So, humans can become idolins? That doesn't make much sense, but okay. That works. So yeah, we're going to be taking on Odin. And yeah, time for some auto battle. I want Edge to steal, if I can get him to steal. Hopefully he does it first try. Damn it, he didn't do it first try, which sucks. Yeah, this guy is weak to lightning, so if you can get lightning on him, do so. Oh yeah, maybe I should get slow on this guy as well. You can steal the darkness augment from this boss. Although, you know, I'm not really sure if I really want to, to be quite honest. I mean, is it really needed? Probably not. I could probably do just fine with focus. I'll try and get it. Alright, we got it. Perfect. Perfect, perfect, perfect. Ow. Jerk. Anyways, um, yeah, I want to get Cry in this guy to lower his defense. Bra uh, brace on Cecil. We need that. Yeah, Ramu summons are good. Cry is good for defense down. Jump, Kane! Jump! Yeah, it's time for a Zeus's Wrath on Edge. Oh, yeah, his sword's up in the air. That means he's gonna start... Uh, he's gonna use Zantetsukin very, very soon here. And it deals a ton of damage to all party members, so yeah. Let's see if I can kill this fucker before he can even get that attack off. I might be able to. Yeah. Yeah, we got him.
so yeah, I probably didn't need to use Upgrade and Berserk and Haste, but yeah, they needed to give that guy more HP. He's just way too easy. Good amount of experience. Alright. Dun, dun, dun. And Rydia learns the Odin Summon. I am not a fan of this summon. It's not very good. Let's take a look at it. Summon Odin to attack. But it basically doesn't tell you that all it is is like an instant death attack. That's all it is. If the enemy can survive instant death attacks, then that summon is worthless. So, yeah, we're going to get a little di uh, thought dialogue here, huh? Yes, you will ever be our king. Yes, be at peace. Ooh, even Edge is impressed. I'm surprised. Cool. There you go, that's how you get the Odin summon. Just use lightning attacks. He's easy. If he does get Zen Tetsuken off, uh, it could wipe you out. <laughs> but my strategy is just to kill him before he can. I mean, it's, you should be able to. You shouldn't have any problems. Just use Ramu with Rydia. Or Thundaga. Upgrade helps. And there you go. Anyways, where I'm going to go now is the crystal room on the moon. I've already shown you how to get there. But there's actually a few augments that we can pick up there that I want to pick up now uh, before I move on with other stuff. So I'll just meet you there. Alright, off screen walking here to the crystal palace area. Before I go forward a little bit more... When it, what I ended up doing was I gave a couple more augments to get to uh, Kane. I gave him the Kick and the Darkness augments. Mainly yeah, because I can't really think of anybody better to use them right now. So, yeah, I gave Darkness. Yeah, I didn't equip it there, but... Uh, I can just focus and then kick after that. And I can either use focus or Darkness along with Focus, or I could, you know... It's not too hard to figure out, but either way, um, yeah. He's got some more powerful attacks now. Takes him a little bit to charge up, but he's got some more powerful attacks now. Anyways. Now, if you come up here, there's actually three augments that Fasoya leaves behind. If you did not give him any augments, then there's one up here. If you gave him one, then there's two. If you gave him two augments, then there's three. First of all, we get the Phoenix Augment. So basically how this Augment works is, uh, you give it, well obviously you gotta give it to a character, but if that character has it equipped in their battle menu, uh, and they get KO'd in battle, uh, they will revive all the other party members in the battle based on their magic points. So right now Cecil has 223 out of 241 magic points. That's a certain percentage of, of magic points. So whatever percentage that is, uh, current MP as opposed to max MP, uh, that will restore the character's uh, HP by that percentage. So let's say, I don't know the exact percentage here, but let's say that 223 out of 241 is 91%. Uh, if Cecil gets KO'd, then he will revive all the other party members in battle at 91% HP. That's the best way I can explain it. So there you go. Very useful. The only thing that sucks is uh, it uses up the magic points, so you have to restore the magic points before uh, the Phoenix can be used or before it goes into effect again. Alright, and the next augment is the Bless Augment. Now, uh, I like giving this one to Rydia because it gives her something to do when she's not casting summons or spells. 
Uh, the reason why I gave Phoenix the Cecil is because uh, he has the highest survivability with the setup I have for him. So he's usually most likely going to be the last man standing. But for Rydia, when, like I said, when you, she's not casting Ramu or Leviathan or summons or spells, it's nice to have an ability like this. So yeah, I'll put it in her, uh, her thing here. Black Magic... Summon... Fast Talker... And there you go. And last but not least, we get the Omni Casting Augment, which is amazing! This is another great augment. This one is going to Rosa. She makes the most use out of it, seeing as her magic is probably the most useful out of any of the characters. Now basically what this augment does, is it makes it so all spells are multi-targeting. So, an example. Arise is a single targeting spell. You cannot cast Arise normally on more than one character, but if you have Omni casting, you can. Let's say you have three party members that are KO'd and you want to revive all of them. Now you can. So that is freaking awesome. Uh, dual. Uh, how do I want to set this up here? Uh, white magic, Omni casting, white magic. Uh, Dual cast. Yeah, I don't really need white magic anymore, so I'll just keep Prey. So yeah, Prey, dual cast, omni casting, M MP plus 50%. Hell yeah. Good stuff. And our party members are, th are thinking, huh? Vessels for the thoughts of the Lunarians? I don't know, but I'm gonna screw around with that crap later, I think. Yeah, they might not need us after all. They might be able to do it without us, right? We're just going in there for extra, you know, insurance, I guess. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, I think next we're going to be heading to the Lair of the Father. I'll be showing that off next, now that I have some halfway decent augments. So I'll meet you back at the Lunar Whale. Alright, back on the Lunar Whale. We are going to go to the Lair of the Fathers. So let's go there. And I'll show flying there, just in case you forgot where it was. Should be pretty easy for, to, for you to find, though. And you want to land your airship roundabouts right there. Alright, so we're, at, we're about to enter a fairly dangerous area, so I need to set up my auto battle here. Cry's okay. Bless is good. Brace is excellent. Prey. Hmm. I already have Prey in the menu there. Let's go with something a little bit different. Let's go with some white magic and some reflect. <clears throat> Where is my reflect? Oh, there it is. And the reason why I want Reflect to be cast on the entire party is there are Dark Sages in this cave, and all they do is spam spells. So if I can Reflect the spells, that would be beneficial. And what do I have for Kane? As far as abilities, focus. Okay, that works. So yeah, I'm pretty sure the Dark Sages, they don't just attack Cecil with the magic. Uh, all the time, if they multi-target, they can still hit the entire party. Uh, if they single target, they will attack Cecil. If they multi-target, uh, they'll just hit the entire party for a lot of damage. So, yeah, that sucks. You want to try to minimize that if you can. So that's how I'm going to go with this setup right here. For now. But, 
We're going to explore the lair of the father in the next episode. This is Veteran0121. I'd like to thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you next time.